Our topic this evening is in a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet, or for that matter, in any spreadsheet, when is a date not a date? This is much like the warning we get in our side view mirrors that objects may appear closer than they really are. So the emphasis is in analyzing the data in a spreadsheet before you actually jump in and try to create some formulas or try to do anything with it. At issue is when you attempt to plot a chart from data that you've entered numerically, you want it to represent years. And the question is, when is a year that you enter into a cell a year versus when is it entered into a cell a number? This is a sequel to a presentation I did about a year ago on when is a number not a number. And we've all had those problems downloading uh, files from the web, downloading tables from the web, or linking to external data or data that's come from another source when what you see in the cell really is not what's in the cell. So stating the obvious, uh, the obvious is not simple. The corollary of which Sometimes the simple is not so obvious. The um, following that I'm going to present to you uh, is a challenge to an interviewee by an interviewer for a job. It appeared in the newspaper, I think, about two to four weeks ago. And um, it, it has nothing specifically to do with Excel, but it has everything to do with just not being so quick to draw a conclusion. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you the problem. In the case of the interviewer uh, asking the interviewee the problem or asking for a solution to the problem, the interviewee did not see the problem. He had to just listen, think, and respond. So here's the problem. If a hammer costs one dollar more than a nail, and together they cost a dollar ten, how much does the nail cost? Okay, time's up. The answer is... So what is the year we live in, and how do we say or represent it? One way would be to say 2014. Another way would be to say 2014. Another way would be to say 41,780 days as a fractional portion of a day, if you're counting the hours. And I will leave it up to Steve Rich to determine why in Excel it comes out to be not 8.333333 on, but it ends with uh, zeros. I have no idea. Or we could say just plain old 2014. So finally, here's the data that we're asked to plot. The first column has the year, and the second column has what they call the volume. You'll notice that the uh, years are right justified. However, the question really is what are these? Are they numbers or are they dates? And the short answer is you really can't tell. So looking at it directly from the Excel perspective, here I have my data. And in the same worksheet, I want to generate this chart. The years are my horizontal or my category axis. And my vertical axis represents the volume. So typically, what we have been trained to do is you highlight the cells in question. Go to the Insert tab, and in 2007, uh, you look for where you'll find your charts. This is 2013, and the chart section is in this section here. The drop down gives me choice of which chart I want, and if I choose what normally would work, lo and behold, what I see here, I am plotting the blue bar is representing the year. That's not really what I want. 
and the orange is representing the volume, which is what I want. I would like the uh, the year actually to be my horizontal axis. So I can play around with the data, which I will, by selecting the data. And you see immediately the horizontal axis is not correct. So if I edit that, and simply select the horizontal axes as the correct values. I see I'm getting close to what I want. I see 2011 through 2014, so that's okay. And I then see that my values, my series which I am plotting, are both the year and the volume. I do not want the year, I only want the volume. So I click on the year and remove the year and now I have just the volume which is what I want. Well, why don't we get that in the first place? Actually in Excel 2013 you can get that in the first place. Um, in insert we have what is called recommended charts. Click on recommended chart one of the charts happens to be exactly what I want. I can either get it as a line chart or I can get it as a column bar chart. I can't see this but this looks like a point chart. I call it a scatter chart. Um, I could get it as a pie chart and I also get it as an area chart. So if I want my bar chart, I just click on it and say OK, and I get it. So the magic is done for you, and by doing some backwards engineering, if you right click, um, select data, and you'll see that the same thing we just did manually, where the horizontal axis corresponds to the years, is now correct and the vertical axis, what they're calling the series, is volume and that is correct. So in 2013 I can luck out, I can do the recommended charts, uh, or I can play around with the column chart and then make sure that my data, right click, select data, uh, corresponds to really what I want to chart. So if I didn't have the recommended charts like I did in 2013, or if I weren't as apt at um, playing around with the manual selection, what are some of my other options? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is, well, why not format it as text? And uh, that should solve the problem. That way um, I will have a label uh, 2011 it would be then the label or text and my volume would be my measurement uh, my metric what I'm measuring so let's take a look at that formatting the years as text may or may not solve the problem it doesn't completely solve the problem you'll notice that the uh, years now is left justified so we're going to go into Excel and see what happens. So we, here we are back in Excel and if I highlight the years, right click, format cells, choose text. Uh, you can't see below here but there is, if I raise it up, yeah you can see it now. OK button. I formatted that as text it is left justified, which implies text. And now if I attempt to chart this by going to insert tab, my chart, I'm back with the same problem. However, this is formatted as text, but originally I entered in numbers. So let's see what happens if I would re-enter the numbers at this point as is already formatted as text. So I get 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, and now 
I do get a single bar. However, I'm not quite satisfied. I'm getting one, two, three, four. It is not really giving me what I want. So if I highlight my data and insert tab, column chart, I now, by replotting it, get what I want. So that is one possible solution. That solution again is to essentially re-enter your data, format it as text, re-enter the data, rechart it, or do all this in the beginning and you won't have that problem. Formatting the, um, the years as a date also does not solve the problem. Uh, the problem is what you think is the year is really a number, as we will see when we go to Excel. So if you were to format uh, the value 2011, it happens to be equivalent to 7-3-1905, which really means it's counting from January 1st, 1900, 2011 days, and that equates to five years, seven months, in three days since the computer, since Microsoft's computer have been keeping track of time. And even if you were to do a custom formatting by using YYYY, it only picks out the year again from the uh, short date format. So neither one of those are really a valid solution. So let's go to Excel and see how that flies with Excel itself. So here I am back in Excel. And let me go to highlight my years. Uh, right click, format cells, format my cells as date. And you'll see what it's doing. It's taking the 2011, counting from January 1st, 1900, and that equates to five years, seven months, and three days to give you July 3rd, 1905. Uh, even if I were to do a custom formatting and chose the format Y, 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 it picks out only the year from the 7-3-1905. It has nothing at all to do with recognizing that 2011 is the year 2011. So it's no good. But what if I were to use real dates? Um, for 2011, I could pick any day in the year, but I happen to just arbitrarily chose January 1st, 2011, January 1st for the other four years as well. So let's see what happens when I go to Excel and try to use that. Okay, here I am in Excel. I do have it formatted already, as I have indicated, formatted as dates. Um, if I just highlight them, right click, format cells, you see they are dates. Um, I also now display this as a custom formatting. So if I have format cells and I did a custom formatting where I just want to pick out the year, I would do Y, 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 and say OK to that. So I have 2011 through 2014. Notice it's right justified, which implies it's numeric. In fact, dates are numeric, but it's a little bit different than being numeric numeric. It's actually a date that is being formatted as numeric. A little tricky in the, in the order in which I say that or, or in the order in which you do these things. However, if I highlight and attempt to graph with this data, I get what I want. So this solution is to use real dates. Uh, real dates 
are using a month, day, year. However, to format it, custom formatting with the Y, 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 I think I said three Y's, I need four Y's. Okay, custom formatting so it displays the years just to make it more intelligible. And then just to chart that the, the normal way. So that is a solution. Now recall earlier that I uh, had formatted my years as text. And even when I did that and tried to graph it, it would not fly. The irony is if you put a label prefix, which is a single apostrophe, in front of the date, in front of the year, after you've already entered the, the year in, it will work. So a label prefix means whatever's in the cell is displayed as is, meaning that it will be interpreted as text. And you can do that before you type, or you can do that after you type. Of course, if you do it before you type, you might as well format it as text. It's more efficient. Um, but you can do it afterwards. Um, if you're sophisticated enough, you can put a concatenation with a single apostrophe and concatenate your yourselves. I'm not going to get into that, but um, this is a solution for something after the fact. So let's see how that works in Excel. Okay, so here I have data that already has a label prefix. If I highlight my data and do my chart, okay, everything is cool, everything is working. And just to prove that uh, this will work after the fact, if I do 2015, there's a number, it lines up on the right. And let's just give it the value that makes it stand out, 1,000. Uh, notice it's not linked to the table, not linked to the chart, which is a reason for learning tables. Tables are unique from Excel 2007 on up. Anyhow, if I re graph it. Let's see what happens. That last one presents the same problem that we've had before. Now if I just go back and edit it by putting a label prefix, a single quotation mark or apostrophe, voila. However, my Horizontal axis is not correct. I could go into select data, but I think the easiest thing is just to redo it by doing insert. And it's now fixed. So what was the answer to this uh, problem? If a hammer costs a dollar more than a nail and together they cost a dollar ten, how much does the nail cost? How many of you said 10 cents? 10 cents is not the correct answer. Think about it. The answer is 5 cents. 5 cents and a dollar five for the hammer, if it's a dollar more than the nail, is a dollar ten. Reminds me of the SAT questions that we uh, went through many, many years ago. But it's not so much for the uh, college entrance as it is for the entrance into the denizens of Excel, or so I think.